Welcome to NPTEL MOOCs course on Computer Vision and Image Processing, Fundamentals and Applications. Today I am going to explain the concept of the supervised and the unsupervised artificial neural networks and mainly I will be considering one popular learning algorithm that is the back propagation learning algorithm. In the back propagation learning algorithm, we know what is the desired output and also we can calculate the actual output. The difference between the desired output and the actual output that is the error. The error is back propagated to the input to adjust the weights of the artificial neural network. So, knowledge of the artificial neural networks is available in the form of weight vector. So, that concept I will be explaining that is the concept of the supervised learning and after this I will be explaining the concept of unsupervised clustering by considering uh, some uh, popular neural networks one is the competitive learning and another very popular algorithm is Kohonen neural networks. So, let us begin this class. So, the first point is the training. So, training for the supervised artificial neural network. So, training means finding appropriate weights and other parameters of the artificial neural network. In my last class, I mentioned that the knowledge of the artificial neural network is available in the weights. So, during the training I have to determine the weights and other parameters of the artificial neural networks and that is the concept of the supervised artificial neural network. So, that I will be explaining in detail uh, in this class and some basic neural network structures. So, uh, I am explaining some of these networks. The first one is the multi-layer feed forward network that is the multi-layer perceptron MLP. Another network is the feedback or recurrent network, hopeful network, competitive network, self-organizing network. So, briefly I will explain the concept of all these networks and mainly the concept of the MLP, the multi-layer perceptron and also the concept of the competitive network and the self-organizing network. So, what is MLP? Move to the next slide. In case of the multi-layer feed forward network or the multi-layer perceptron MLP, uh, you can see in the figure, I have one input layer, one output layer and in between uh, one hidden layer I am showing. There may be more than one hidden layers, maybe two hidden layers, three hidden layers based on the complexity of the problem. For a simple problem, I may only consider input layer and the output layer, no need of considering the hidden layer. If the samples of the classes are linearly separable and if I consider a very simple classification problem, then I can consider only simple artificial neural network without hidden layer. That means I have only input layer and the output layer and there is no hidden layer between the input layer and the output layer. But for a complex problem, I have to consider hidden layers between input layer and the output layer. And in the figure, you can see I am showing the nodes corresponding to the input layer, the nodes corresponding to the hidden layer and the output node also I have shown in the figure. So, this is one example of the multi-layer feed forward network or the multi-layer perceptron MLP. So, move to the next slide. Here also I have shown the MLP that is the feed forward network. So, we have one hidden layer between the input layer and the output layer. So, you can see the input neurons and the output neurons and in between the hidden layer is there. So, you can see the hidden neurons also and also the interconnections between the neurons. So, the connecting weights if I consider suppose the connecting weight is W i j. So, this is the connecting weight between the input node and the hidden nodes. So, all the possible connections I am considering here and similarly we may consider the weight uh, between the hidden layer and the output layer suppose so w, w k l. So, this is the weight. So, all these weights I have to consider. So, this is one example of the feed forward neural network. 
Now, why actually we need the hidden layer? So, already I mentioned that for a complex pattern classification problem, we have to consider the hidden layer. If, I, if the problem is very simple, then uh, I may consider only the input layer and the output layer, but for a complex uh, pattern classification problem, I have to consider hidden layers. There may be single hidden layer, only one layer or maybe multiple hidden layers between input and the output layers. So, why actually we need the hidden layer? So, corresponding to multi-class classification problem, I can give one example, multi-class classification. So, this problem I am considering and suppose I have three classes, omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. So, three classes I am considering and corresponding to this I am considering one feed forward network. So, suppose this is x1, x2, xd. So, we are considering a d dimensional fissure vector, the fissure vector is x and we are considering a hidden layer. Suppose this is H1, H2, H3. So, these are the nodes of the hidden layer and also we are considering the output layer. So, these are the nodes of the output layer. And we can consider all the possible connections. We can consider the connections like this. That is the interconnections between the nodes of the input layer and the hidden layer. So, these connections I have to determine. So, like this I may have this type of connections. I am not showing all the connections. So, this feed forward network I am considering. So, the input is x and the hidden neurons are h1, h2, h3 and we have the output. Output is y1, y2, y3. So, for this classification problem suppose and this is my, these are my decision boundaries. So, suppose this uh, parameter is H1, H2 and H3. So, I may consider like this 0, 1, 0, 1 and 0, 1. So, suppose if I consider this region that corresponds to the class omega 1. So, this is the class omega 2, this portion and this region corresponding to the class omega 3. So, suppose I am making a table H1, H2, H3. So, suppose H1 is 1 and H2 is also 1. So, here you can see in this figure the H1 is 1 and H2 is 1. So, that means uh, output, what output I have to consider? output will be y1 should be equal to 1 and that corresponds to the class omega 1. So, in this case h1 is 1 and h2 is 1 and h3 uh, that is the don't care. We are not considering this h3 it may be 0 or 1 that is not important, but h1 should be 1 and h2 should be 1 and corresponding to this y1 should be equal to 1 and that is nothing but the class omega 1. So, that means we are considering this region that is the omega 1 we are considering that class we are considering. And suppose uh, if I consider H2 is 0 and H3 is 1. Okay. So, that means we are considering uh, this region uh, the uh, this 0 we are considering and 1 is considered h2 is 0 and h3 is 1. So, corresponding to this the class is y2. So, y2 should be the output. So, output y2 will be 1 and that corresponds to the class omega 2. And in this case this h1 is do not care. So, we are not considering h1, but the important is h2 and h3 we are considering. So, that means we are considering the class omega 2. So, 
if the h2 is 0 and h3 is 1 then corresponding to this the class will be omega 2 and corresponding to this y2 will be equal to 1. And finally, if I consider uh, h1 is 0, h2 is do not care and h3 is also 0. So, that means we are considering this one 0, 0 and that corresponds to the class omega 3. So, in this case the output y3 should be equal to 1 and that corresponds to the class omega 3. So, you can see the importance of the hidden neurons. So, hidden neurons we are considering h1, h2 and h3 and based on these values I can get the outputs. So, outputs are y1, y2 and y3. So, from this explanation you can understand the importance of the hidden layer. So, this problem is the multi class classi classification problem and we are considering three classes omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3. So, next one is the feedback network that is also called the recurrent network. In case of the feedback network the output is fed back to the input layer. So, that is the definition of the feedback network. So, after this the hope field network. So, in case of the hope field network every node is connected to every other node. So, here in the figure you can see the node 1 is connected to 3, 3 is connected to 2, 2 is connected to 1. So, that means that every node is connected to every other nodes. And also we are considering the symmetric width. So, what is the symmetric width? So, suppose if I consider the connections between 1 and 3. So, from 1 to 3 the weight is minus 2 and from 3 to 1 the weight is minus 2 that is the symmetric weight. Similarly, if I see the, the connections from 3 to 2. So, from 3 to 2 the weight is 1 and from 2 to 3 it is 1. So, that is called the symmetric weight. So, every node is connected to every other node and we are considering symmetric weights and that is the one definition of the Hopfill network. So, after this there is another important network that is the competitive network. So, this is actually employed for unsupervised clustering. So, in the competitive network, so first part is if you see the first part is the feed forward network. So, from here to here, so this is nothing but the feed forward network. and we are considering a competitive layer. So, the competitive layer is nothing but a comparator. So, that is nothing but the comparator. So, the input to the competitive layer suppose the input is I 1, I 2, I 3. So, actually these are the outputs of the feed forward network and these are the inputs to the competitive layer and the outputs are suppose O1, O2, O3. So, these are the outputs of the competitive layer. So, in a particular instant what happens suppose I2 is maximum. So, there is a comparison between I1, I2 and I3. So, which one is maximum at a particular time? So, corresponding to that condition the output will fire that means I2 is maximum. So, I am getting the output O2 I am getting. So, I2 is maximum. So, corresponding to this the output will be O2. So, at a particular time I will get the output O2. So, there is a uh, comparison between I1, I2 and I3 out of which, which one is maximum that is considered and corresponding to this we get the output. So, that is the uh, objective of the competitive layer. So, this is one architecture of the competitive layer that is the competitive layer architectures. In this case we are considering the inputs D1, D2 and D3. So, these are my inputs. So, outputs are O1, O2 and O3. So, these are the outputs and I want to determine the minimum which one is minimum D1 is minimum or D2 is minimum or D3 is minimum. So, if D1 is minimum then O1 will be 1. So, suppose that D1 is minimum. 
corresponding to this O1 will be equal to 1 otherwise it will be 0. So, if I consider this uh, uh, competitive layer architecture for determining the D1 as minimum I am considering this structure inside the box and we are considering two thresholds threshold 0 and threshold 3 by 2. So, you can also determine uh, this condition. So, randomly you can select some values suppose this value is supposed to 3 5 and just you apply this principle here you can determine the neuron outputs. You can see corresponding to D1 is minimum O1 will be O1 will be equal to 1. So, you will get that one. So, this is a very simple architecture for the competitive layer and we can determine the minimum out of these 3 D1, D2 and D3. And after this the, the concept of the self organizing network. So, in the self organizing network you can see uh, this is the structure and this is also called the Cohonen neural network. Cohonen neural network. So, this is the self organizing map that is the SOM self organizing map the Cohonen neural network. So, you can see this is the input vector input vector is x x is the input vector. So, n dimensional vector and these vectors are mapped into a two dimensional space. So, if you see the definition of this self organizing network. So, a mapping is considered from the input n dimensional data space onto one or two dimensional array of nodes. So, in this figure we are considering a two dimensional array the size is x cross y. So, this is x and this is y. So, two dimensional array is considered and we are doing the mapping mapping of the input vector and corresponding to this uh, we have the nodes in the uh, in the array. And one important point is topological relationships in the input space are maintained. So, that means here you can see this suppose x1 is close to x2 in the two dimensional space that is in the array that is maintained. So, x1 should be uh, close to x2. So, that topological relationship is maintained in the array that is the two dimensional array. So, suppose this is this node is x 1 and you can expect x 2 or x 3 near near to this x 1. So, that is the topological relationships in the 2 D array. So, this the self organizing map this is employed for unsupervised clustering. So, before going to that uh, first let us discuss about the supervised learning that is how to train the supervised network that is the artificial neural network we can consider the feed forward network or the MLP that is the multi layer perceptron and how to do the training. In my last class I explained the concept of the training here again I am explaining the concept. So, how to do the training with the help of the uh, principle or the algorithm that is the back propagation training. So, if you see this algorithm suppose I have a network and suppose the input is x and we are considering the weight vector is w and corresponding to this output is y. So, what I have to do in this training that, that is the back propagation training first I have to apply inputs to the network. So, I am applying the inputs to the network. And corresponding to this we can determine the neuron outputs we can determine. So, in case of the supervised learning we know what is the desired output and in this calculation we can determine the actual output. The difference between the desired output and the actual output that is called the error. So, the error is back propagated to the input to minimize the error and because of this uh, minimization I am adjusting the weights of the artificial neural network. So, here you can see first I am applying the input to the network after this we are determining all the neuron outputs 
compare all outputs at output layer with desired outputs because we know the desired output and that is the concept of the supervised learning. So, corresponding to x, a particular x, we know what is the desired output. After this compute and propagate the error, the error is nothing but the difference between the desired output and the actual output. So, compute and propagate error measure backward through the network and minimize error. So, we have to minimize the error and for minimization of the error, we are adjusting the weights of the artificial neural network. So, like this we have to do the training. So, this process I have to do iteratively until a particular condition is not satisfied. That is the convergence condition. So, here I am showing how to do the training that is the back propagation training. So, we have the inputs x1, x2, xn. So, we are considering n number of input nodes and wij that is the weight connecting input node i and the output node j. So, weight is considered that is the wij we are considering that is the connecting weight between the input node i and the output node j. And we know what is the desired output at a particular node j. So, dj is the desired output at the node j. And corresponding to this we can determine the error that is a square error. So, square error we can determine that is the desired output and what is the actual output. Actual output is computed like this. This is nothing but the multiplication of the weight and the input. And for all the neurons i is equal to 1 to n we have to do this. And we have to minimize the error. So, for minimization of the error we have to adjust the weights of the artificial neural networks. So, that is why we are differentiating the error with respect to the weight. The weight is wij. So, this differentiation I am doing and it is equating to 0. And what is the weight updation rule? Here you can see this is the new weight, this is the new weight, this is the old weight and this eta is the learning rate. So, it determines the learning rate and this term is nothing but the difference between the desired output and the actual output. So, this is the weight updation rule and this is nothing but the gradient descent algorithm and that already I have explained in one of my class. So, it is nothing but the gradient. So, this is the gradient descent algorithm. So, we have to adjust the weights of the artificial neural network so that we can reduce the error. And this learning rate uh, actually it determines the, the convergence. If eta is small, the convergence will take time and if the eta is very high, the convergence I will get immediately, but that may not be so accurate. So, there should be a compromise between the high eta and the low eta value. So, this is the concept of the back propagation algorithm. So, in my next slide I will explain this concept again. So, here you can see uh, this is the feed forward network we are considering and we have the input nodes and you can see I am considering the input is x1, x2, x3. So, this is the input layer and input feature vector is x and we are considering one bias input. Already I have explained the importance of the bias input and again you can see I am considering the second layer that is a hidden layer and in the hidden layer we are considering the uh, one bias input. So, this bias input we are considering and again in, in the third layer also you can see I am considering the bias input and these are the neurons x11, x21, x31 these are the neurons in the uh, hidden layer, one hidden layer and another neuron neurons are x12, x22, x32. So, these, these are the neurons of the hidden layers and you can see the connecting uh, weights. So, you can see all the interconnections and in between you have the weights. So, suppose this weight is wij. So, we may consider like this. 
So during the training, I have to adjust the weights of the artificial neural networks. So we have to adjust the weights. So we have to get the, the values of the weights so that we can reduce the error. The error is nothing but the desired output minus actual output. That is the difference between the desired output and the actual output that is the error. So I have to minimize the error and I am applying the training samples and corresponding to the training samples we know what is the desired output and we can determine the actual output and based on this we can determine the error. The error is back propagated to the input to adjust the weights of the artificial neural network. So this is the concept of the back propagation training. So the same thing here I am explaining here. So suppose simple network I am considering. So these are the input nodes and suppose x is the input vector, feature vector. So w is the weight vector and y is the output that is nothing but w transpose x. So I am getting the output like this. So what is the error? Error is nothing but the desired output minus actual output. So y is the actual output. So we can determine the square error we can determine and we have to minimize the error with respect to the weight vector w. So each square is equal to minus twice yd minus y x. So I will be getting this expression. So how to get this expression? Suppose y is equal to w1 x1 plus w2 x2 like this. This is the y. So I can determine y. E square that is the squared error. So desired output minus w1 x1 minus w2 x2 minus like this. This is the squared error. So now I have to differentiate E square with respect to the width w1. So differentiating the error with respect to w1. So if I do the differentiation, so you can see I am getting minus 2 yd minus w1 x1 minus w2 x2 and x1 I am getting. Similarly, if I do the differentiation with respect to w2, in this case also I am getting twice yd minus w1 x1 minus w2 x2 and this x2. So I can do the differentiation like this. So actually from this I am getting this one. So from this actually I am getting this one. So what is the weight updation rule? So finally, I have to consider the weight updation rule that already I have mentioned. So how to update the weight? So W star is the new weight. This is the old weight. W is the no, new weight. And we are considering 1 by 2. Eta, eta is the learning rate. And this, the differentiation with respect to W, that is the error square is differentiated. So I am getting the, uh, the weight updation rule and this is the actually the gradient descent algorithm. Gradient descent algorithm. So this is the concept of the back propagation training. So now move to the next slide. So what is the unsupervised learning? So unsupervised artificial neural networks can be employed for unsupervised clustering like the k-means clustering or the fuzzy k-means clustering we have already discussed. The unsupervised artificial neural networks can be employed for clustering. So that concept I am going to explain. 
So first concept is the competitive learning. So in the neural ne network, uh, we are considering the competitive learning to generate the weight vectors that is nothing but the code vectors and we can consider this principle. So first in the network, I have to randomly initialize all the weights. After this the training vectors that is the vector x are applied one by one and if the output and if the output node j fires for a particular input x the corresponding weight vector is updated. So suppose if I consider one input is x and corresponding to this input if the output node j fires then the corresponding weight vector should be updated. So this is the updation rule. So wj here you can see the wj the old weight so this is the old weight and this is the new weight. And this eta already I have explained that is nothing but the learning rate that controls the learning rate x minus wj. So in this case we have to determine which one is the winning neuron corresponding to a particular input x I have to determine which one is the winning neuron and the winning neuron is updated by considering this updation rule. So the basic principle I will explain in the next slide. So what is the competitive learning? So suppose this is x1 like this up to xd. So that is nothing but the input feature vector x that is the d dimensional feature vector. And we are considering uh, the cluster centers y1, y2 these are the cluster centers and we are considering c number of cluster centers that means c number of clusters and we are considering the interconnections between the neurons. So all the connections we are considering and suppose corresponding to y1 my weight vector is w1 this is the w1. So I have the clusters. So this is suppose one cluster and the cluster center is y1 and like this I have c number of clusters. So this is also another cluster and the cluster center is suppose yc, c number of clusters are available and we are considering one comparator. So we are connecting to the comparators. So all the connections we are not showing and the output terminals are 1 because we have c number of classes to c. So c number of classes we are considering. So suppose this, this structure is considered. So corresponding to y1 how, how to get y1 this you can see the input is x and with the help of the weight vector, weight vector is w1, I am getting the output, output is y1. So in this case, this actually y i, particular y i depends on the weight vector w i. That is the y i, it depends on the weight vector w i because x is multiplied with w1 and I am getting y1. In this case, I have to find the distance between x and the y's. So first I have to determine the distance between x and y1, x and y2, x and yc. So I have to find all the distances. And we have to find the minimum distance, which one is the minimum distance. Suppose the distance between x and y1 that is minimum. So I am getting the minimum distance corresponding to y1 and the corresponding weight vector is w1. 
so this w1 is the winner so suppose uh, if i consider suppose this is yi so we are considering yi so this is the yi we are considering the distance between x and yi that is minimum and the corresponding weight is wi so i can write the distance between distance between x and yi that is the minimum minimum distance we are getting so corresponding to this the weight the weight is wi so this wi that is actually the winning neuron winning neuron so based on the minimum distance i can determine the winning neuron that is actually the winner wi is the winner so how to update the winner the winner is updated like this so wi star is equal to wi plus epsilon x minus wi so the winner is updated like this so this is the new weight this is the old weight epsilon is some constant maybe small fraction we can consider maybe 0 0.8 0 0.9 so it actually determines the learning rate so small fraction we are considering and this x minus wi that is actually the learning vector x minus wi is the learning vector so the winner is updated like this so now how actually we update the other neurons that means which are not winners so suppose wj so this is not winner so corresponding to this the weight updation rule is wj star wj minus epsilon x minus wj for i is not equal to j so this is the weight updation rule for all the losing neurons so for winning neurons this is the weight updation rule that is for the winner and for other neurons this is the weight updation rule so you can see in one case it is plus in another case it is minus so that means what i am doing so suppose this is my cluster and suppose this is my weight vector the weight vector is wi and suppose this is my the vector is x so i am moving wi to a new position the new position is wi star so this is the new position so i am moving wi towards x so that is the interpretation of this equation that is i am moving wi towards x and what about the other neurons that is the wj i am moving other other neurons or other weights away from the fisher vector x so that means i am moving the weights corresponding to the winning neurons towards the fisher vector x and i am moving other weight vectors away from the fisher vector x so that means i am giving more importance to the winners and because of this process i will be getting the clusters so this process is very similar to the k means clustering in the k means clustering also we are finding the minimum distance between the input vector and the centroids in this case also i am finding the distance between the input vector x and the centroids the centroids are y1 y2 yc so i have c number of classes or c number of clusters so we are finding the minimum distance like the k means clustering and based on this i am updating the weights so that means i am giving more importance to the winning neurons so all always the winning neuro neurons are updated so this problem uh, is called the under utilization problem under utilization problem 
because I am giving maximum importance to the winning neurons. So, there is another variation of this competitive learning. So, I am going to explain that one. So, that is called the frequency sensitive competitive learning that is another form of the competitive learning. So, that is the frequency sensitive competitive learning. So, this is another form of the competitive learning. The weight updation rule is again like this. So, W i star that is the, the new weight, the old weight and we are considering the learning vector is like this x minus W i. So, in this case this epsilon, uh, so here you actually it is the new weight, this is the old weight and this epsilon is now defined. So, epsilon is now defined, so it is 1 by f i. So, f i is the frequency, f i is the frequency. Now, what is the meaning of the frequency? That means, the number of times x is mapped to map to w i. So, how many times x is mapped to w i? So, w i is the winning neuron. So, based on this I can write w star is equal to epsilon x plus 1 minus epsilon. So, this is the weight updation rule. So, this weight updation rule already I have explained that is in case of the competitive learning. Now, I am considering this is the weight updation rule, updation rule, weight updation rule for the frequency sensitive competitive learning. So, this is the old weight and this is the new weight. So, this W i star is now 1 by f i x plus f i minus 1 divided by f i w i. I can write like this. So, it is nothing but 1 by f i x plus f i minus 1 w i. So, that is w i star I can write like this. So, this is the weight updation rule. So, how to uh, consider this case because we are considering the frequency, the frequency is f i. So, suppose the Fisher vector, I am giving one example, the Fisher vector is suppose x 1 that is mapped to w i. So, that means only one time it is mapped. So, corresponding to this the w i star if I consider this equation corresponding to this, this equation w i will be equal to x 1. Suppose the next feature vector the next feature vector is suppose x 2 that is also mapped to w i. So, how many times? 2 times. So, if I consider that information two times in the above equation, so w i star will be x 1 x 1 plus x 2 divided by 2. So, two times the Fisher vector is mapped to w i and suppose x 3 is not mapped to w i, it is not mapped and we are considering like this and suppose now x 20 that Fisher vector is now mapped to w i. So, how many times? 3 times because between x 2 and x 20 there is no mapping. 
So now three times it is mapped to wi. So corresponding to this your wi star will be equal to x1 plus x2 plus x20 only three times it is mapped so divided by three with the help of this equation. So equation already I have shown with the help of this equation I can determine this one. So that means we are determining the centroid. So this is very similar to the k-means clustering. So we can determine the centroid of the cluster corresponding to the input feature vector x1, x2 like this we can determine the centroid of the cluster. So this is called the frequency sensitive competitive learning. In case of the simple competitive learning the problem already I have explained that is the under utilization problem. So only the winning neuron is updated and we are not considering the losing uh, neurons. So to consider this problem we are considering another important network that is the Kohonen neural network. So let us move to the next slide. So we are considering the the network is the Kohonen neural network. That is nothing but the SOM, the self-organizing map. So the problem of the competitive learning is the underutilization problem. So this problem is considered or this problem is addressed in case of the Kohonen neural network. So corresponding to the winner, we have to consider the weight updation rule. So how to determine the winner that already I have explained. So based on the minimum distance, we can determine the winner. And this is the weight updation rule. So wi star that is the new weight, the old weight and the parameter epsilon now we are considering it is suppose k0 x minus wi. This is for the winner and for other neurons the weight updation rule is wj wj plus epsilon k d x minus wj so for other neurons for winners and this is the weight updation rule for other neurons this is the weight updation rule so here you can see the epsilon we are considering this parameter actually it is a function of two parameters one is k k is nothing but the frequency So that already I have defined in case of the frequency sensitive network, k is the frequency f i and we are considering the distance, d is the distance, distance between that is the Euclidean distance between w i and w j between these two weights w i and w j. So in the, in the first expression here we are considering the distance 0, this distance is 0 because the distance between wi and wi is, is equal to 0. So distance between wi and wi is equal to 0. So th that is why we are considering 0. So in this case the distance is considered that is the neighborhood is considered. So neighborhood is considered around the winner and we are fine we are considering the d max that is the maximum distance we are defining maximum distance we are defining. So in this case what is the principle? So suppose we are considering a particular neighborhood. So this neighborhood we are considering and suppose this is the winning neuron, the winning neuron is wi. And we are considering other neurons suppose wj, uh, so wk suppose wm. So these neurons we are considering, these weights wi, wk, wm. So these weights we are considering. So a particular uh, uh, neighborhood is considered around the winner. So this dmax is defined that is the, the distance is defined 
so that is the d max d max is defined so this epsilon already i told you so it has two parameters one is k and another one is the distance here we are considering the distance is d max so d max is considered so in this case you can see the weight wi that is updated like this so that is for the winner and we are considering the neighborhood and that is defined by d max so that means we have to update wk wm because it is near to wi and it is within the d max so that means we are updating wk we are updating wm so this weights i am updating because it is close to wi that is the winning neuron so now this epsilon it depends on k and d max so that is one is the frequency another one is the maximum distance this distance we are considering to consider the neighborhood around the weight vector wi so in this case uh, the all the neighborhood weight vectors are updated along with the winners so winner takes all so this principle is called the winner takes all because first i have to determine the winners and after this around the winners we are also considering other neurons so that means weight vector wi is considered and all other weight vectors wk wm within this particular neighborhood these are also considered for updation so for updation we are considering all the neurons around the winning neuron so that is why it is called the winner takes all this is called the winner takes all so this is the concept of the cohonen neural network so one problem in this case is in case of the competitive learning the problem was the under utilization so this problem is addressed in case of the cohonen neural network but still there is one problem the problem i can show uh, pictorially so suppose my winning neuron is wi that is the weight vector wi corresponding to the winning neuron and suppose this is wk this is wj and suppose this is the feature vector x so we are computing the distance from the weight vector so in this case if i consider this distance distance between wi and wj and also we are considering the distance between wi and the wk so the distance d1 and distance d2 so from the distance what it is updated wj is updated first wj is updated first and then wk because wj is close to wi as compared to wk so distance is measured from the winning no node so wi is the winning node that is the winning weight vector and distance is measured from wi but actually the distance should be measured from the feature vector x so if i consider this distance suppose this distance is suppose dj and this distance distance between x and wk that is suppose dk so in this case you can see dk is small than dj so if i consider the distance from x then what i have to consider wk should be updated first so first i have to consider wk and after this i have to consider wj second so first i have to update wk and after this i have to update wj so that means in case of the cohonen neural network we are considering the distance from the winning neuron that is from wi we are not considering the distance from the fisher vector x so that is the problem of the cohonen neural network and that problem is eliminated in another network that is called the fuzzy cohonen
neural network so that concept i am not going to explain that is a advanced concept so the problem this problem is eliminated in case of the fuzzy cohonen neural network so this is the summary of the cohonen neural network so uh, what is the summary of the cohonen neural network so first we have to determine the winning neuron that is the corresponding weight vector we have to consider and this is the weight updation rule and wj is nothing but the other neurons these are not the winners so that means the winner is updated and the all the losers are also updated and that means the topological neighborhood are also updated that means the weight vectors within this particular dmax they are also updated along with the winning neurons the learning rate monotonically decreases with increasing topological distances so this topological distance already i have explained so this is the this is the winning neuron wy and this is the and this is the dmax so if i consider this weight vector and this weight vector so this learning rate monotonically decreases with the increasing of the topological distance so that means the this learning rate corresponding to this and corresponding to this it depends on the topological distance so the learning rate also decreases as training progresses and in case of the cohonen neural network already i have explained the concept is the winner takes all so this concept i am explaining again so in case of the som or the cohonen neural network i have explained that we are doing the mapping from the input space into a two dimensional array so here i am considering the two dimensional array and we are showing the mapping from the input vector into a two dimensional array and we are determining the winning neuron and also we are considering the neighborhood neurons so winning weight vector is updated as per the weight updation rule and all the neighborhood also they are also updated so in case of the cohonen neural networks we have we have considered that winner takes all and the lateral connections we are considering to develop a competition between the neurons of the network so we are employing some lateral connections to develop a competition between the neurons of the network so that is also one important point the neurons having the largest activation level among all the output layer neurons is considered as the winner so winner we have determined and we have to update the winners as per the weight updation rule so this lateral connection concept i am explaining in my next slide this lateral connection is important to consider a competition between the neurons of the network so here i have shown one function this function is called the mexican head function so what is the objective of this function the winning neuron is the only neuron which gives an output signal the activity of all other network neurons is suppressed in this competition and we are considering the lateral feedback connections to produce excitatory or inhibitory effects depending on the distance from the winning neuron so suppose we are considering this distance so all the neurons within this particular distance they are updated based on the distance and based on the frequency but that is actually called the excitatory effect and if i consider the these neurons or the these neurons these are not updated this is called the inhibitory effect so we are considering the neurons around the winning neurons within a particular neighborhood and co corresponding to these neurons we are considering the excitatory effect that means these neurons are also updated so that means these weight vectors are also updated in a particular neighborhood so it depends on the epsilon epsilon is a function of two parameters one is the frequency and another one is the dmax 
and corresponding to other neurons beyond DMAX, we are not updating and that is called the inhibitory effect. So, we are considering these two effects, excitatory effect and the inhibitory effect and for this we are considering the Mexican head function. So, this is the concept of the SOM that is the self organizing map and that is the Cohonen neural network or the self organizing map. In this class, I briefly explain the concept of supervised and the unsupervised artificial neural networks. In the supervised artificial neural networks, I briefly explain the concept of multi-layer perceptron. After this, I discuss the concept of back propagation training that is the back propagation learning and finally, I discussed the concept of unsupervised clustering techniques. So, for unsupervised clustering techniques, I introduced the concept of competitive learning and the Cohonen neural network. In the competitive learning or in case of the Cohonen neural networks, I have to update the winners. So, I have to first find the winners and after this I have to update the winners. In case of the competitive learning, the problem is the under utilization. So, that problem can be addressed by Cohonen neural network. In the Cohonen neural networks, I have to update both losing neurons and the winning neurons. And finally, I discuss the concept of fuzzy Cohonen neural network. So, let me stop here today. Thank you.